Gravitational fields are a type of force field. A gravitational field is the area within which the non-contact force due to mass can exert its influence. All masses exert a gravitational pull on the objects around them. The force is only noticeable, however, when the mass of at least one of the objects is very large. Gravitational force is only ever attractive. When drawing a gravitational field, therefore, all the field lines are directed towards the center of the mass. The strength of a gravitational field increases with proximity to the surface of the mass. This is clear from the diagram on the previous screen, as the field lines are closer near the surface. In quantitative terms, gravitational field strength at a point is the gravitational force per unit mass acting at that point. The units of gravitational field strength are newtons per kilogram. This is dimensionally equivalent to meters per second per second. Newton proposed that there is a recognizable relationship which can be stated for the gravitational attraction between two point masses. This is known as Newton's law of gravitation. The law states that any two bodies attract each other with a force that is proportional to each of their masses and inversely proportional to the square of the distance between them. Because the force due to gravity is always attractive, it is common to denote this by placing a negative sign at the beginning of the formula. The value of the gravitational constant can be calculated using experimental data by rearranging the formula. If we consider the Earth as an example of a point mass, assuming that it is a perfect sphere with a uniform gravitational field, we can examine how the gravitational field strength varies as it gets further away from the center of the Earth. Outside the Earth's surface, the gravitational force obeys the inverse square law. Acceleration due to gravity is inversely proportional to the square of the distance from the center of the Earth. When discussing bodies falling close to the Earth's surface, we take g as a constant, as r doesn't vary very much. This value for g is approximate, given the minor changes of r around the Earth, and is known as the acceleration of free fall. The gravitational potential at a point is defined as being equal to the work done in bringing unit mass from infinity to that point. This tells us the potential energy per kilogram of mass. If we assume the Earth to be spherical and of uniform density, we can treat it as if its total mass is concentrated at an infinitesimally small point at its center. The force of attraction on unit mass outside the Earth is gm over r squared, where r is the distance from the center. As work done equals force multiplied by distance, the work done in moving a distance delta r is gm delta r over r squared. The gravitational potential at this point is therefore minus gm over r. The units of gravitational potential are joules per kilogram. The potential energy of a mass at a point is equal to the gravitational potential at that point multiplied by the mass. The gradient of a graph of gravitational potential against distance is equal to the gravitational field strength at that point. Gravitational potential increases as the distance of the object from the mass increases. Weight, F, is the effect of a gravitational field on a mass. It is measured in newtons. Outside a spherical mass, all points at distance r from the center have the same gravitational potential. Effectively, all of these points lie on a sphere of radius r known as an equipotential surface. Satellites are kept in orbit by their gravitational attraction to the body around which they are traveling. Once man-made satellites are in orbit, 
they no longer require engines to keep them moving. The radius of the satellite's orbit depends on its speed rather than its mass. It is possible to calculate the period of a body's orbit by using the formula velocity equals distance over time. It therefore makes sense that T equals S over V, or for a body moving with circular motion at constant speed, T equals 2 pi R over V. Electric fields are the result of the electromagnetic force exerted by a charge. They are an example of a force field, and like gravitational fields, they can be represented by field lines. The area the field covers is the area within which the non-contact force of an electric current can exert its influence. The direction of the field lines is the direction in which a small positive charge would move if placed at that point. An electromagnetic force can only exist between two objects if they have charge. The force exerted on a charged body in an electric field depends on the body's charge and the electric field strength. The electric field strength at a point is defined as the force per unit positive charge placed at that point. The unit of electric field strength is therefore newtons per coulomb, as potential difference is defined as work done per unit charge, we can also say that electric field strength is measured in volts per meter. In 1785, Coulomb showed that the force between two point charges is proportional to each of the charges and inversely proportional to the square of the distance between them. This is known as Coulomb's law. The force exerted by an electrostatic charge can be attractive or repulsive, as there are two types of charge, positive and negative. Without exception, like charges repel and unlike charges attract. The constant of proportionality for Coulomb's law, K, is written as shown here, where epsilon naught is the permittivity of free space, providing the changes are in a vacuum. For the purposes of this section, this is always assumed. This constant can be substituted into the previous equation so that the following is true. If a small test charge, Q, is placed at distance r away from a point charge, Coulomb's law can be used to calculate the force acting on Q. As E equals F over Q, the electric field strength of a point charge in free space or air can also be calculated. Apart from at the very edges, the electric field between parallel plates is uniform. Field lines in close proximity to each other indicate a strong electric field. The electric potential of a point in an electric field is defined as the work done in bringing unit positive charge from infinity to that point. Electric potential is measured in joules per coulomb or volts. Electric potential can be positive or negative because forces due to charges can be attractive or repulsive. Lines, surfaces or volumes which have the same potential along them are known as equipotentials. In a uniform electric field, the field strength is equal to the potential gradient at that point. This tells us that the electric field strength can also be measured in volts per meter.
fields are used to explain interaction between objects which are not in direct contact. A force field is the area within which a non-contact force can exert its influence. There are four basic types of interaction commonly discussed in physics. Gravitational, electrical, magnetic and nuclear. In literal terms, force fields do not exist. They are merely a conceptual aid to enable us to visualize the bizarre phenomenon of interaction between objects which are not in direct contact. The force of interaction between two similar objects is discussed in terms of field strength, and the energy is measured by the potential. Field strength and potential are concepts which are present when contemplating any type of force field. As a result, there are many points of similarity between electric and gravitational fields.